Hello again. In this video we are going to go over scheduling methods within EasyBuilder Pro. I will demonstrate the schedule of function and a macro technique that I like to use. This video can be viewed as an addendum to the last video on timing methods or watch standalone. So let's get started. The first method we're going to talk about is an internal function within EasyBuilder Pro. Uh, it's called Scheduler. It can be found uh, on the Object tab under Time Related and Scheduler. I made two separate examples because uh, basically there are two modes. One is a very simple mode and it uses an embedded day or multiple days for a start time and an end time on that on those same days. Uh, you also in either mode have a prohibit bit or which you might even call it an enable bit. So uh, in this case it's enabled when it's on and it's LB40. Uh, and our output bit is LB41. In this example we're just going to do um, uh, bit schedulers uh, but you can also do a, a word write place the values in using this dialog here but it's just as simple but we're going to use this uh, bit method in these examples I believe that was supposed to be LB41 you can also allow it to check the time on power on and if it was told to turn on and not turn off while the if that time passed while the unit was powered down then it would uh, go ahead and turn this bit on on power up as I said in this uh, simple mode uh, we've just got an embedded start and stop time and um, or you can uh, actually set the stop time individually by day or use the same day with a start and stop time. Now this is all in 24 hour format so bear that in mind and that's about all there is to this simpler mode. I am not going to demonstrate it because it would just take forever to put the exact time we need and then wait for it to elapse but trust me it works so we'll go on to the uh, to the more um, advanced uh, scheduler function in this mode you can actually assign addresses for all of the set points you can enable you can read the status uh, if there's an error you can enable the off function you can set a start day or a multiple of start days as well as start hour, minute, second. The same with the end time if end is enabled. You can set the end day, the end hour, minute, and second. Now I probably wouldn't have normally laid out a scheduler page the way I did this one is kind of crowded and, uh, and and doesn't look great. But what I wanted to do was uh, arrange the objects according to the address structure of the function. So let's go ahead and open it up and look at that. Let me try and get this out of the way best I can. Now um, <clears throat> our uh, action address or output bit is LB51 that's this lamp right here on the set time tab we've got the address radio button clicked and our beginning address is RWA uh, register 0 the reason I used RWA is because I wanted the set points to be retentive if you were running a driver you could actually use PLC addresses but I didn't define a driver in this example uh, the control address is our first word it takes 10 words RWA0 
status word is RWA1. The action mode word is RWA2. Start time, day, hour, minute, three, four, five, second, six. End time, day, hour, minute, second, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can actually, we've got a pretty good help menu here, and you can actually bring this up and um, click on addresses. And if you hover over the, uh, the actual word and click it, it will give you a, a good description. So this is a control word, and we're only using one bit uh, out of the word, and this actually uh, enables the scheduler function. Uh, the status word uses two bits. Uh, bit zero is whether or not it's started reading the time and it should come on when your control bit is on. It explains all that. And then uh, bit one is a an error bit. Uh, so if there's some kind of error a uh, bad set point or something like that, then uh, then that'll come on. Uh, start time day. This word uses uh, seven bits for seven days out of that word. Uh, starting with bit zero on Sunday and ending with bit six on Saturday. Start time hour. 16-bit format. Uh, 0 to 23, so you would probably want to set your limits in your input object to 0 to 23. And uh, as I said before, this is only in 24-hour format. The same with the minute, second, and of course everything applies the same with the end times, which starts at word 7. So we'll go ahead and look at our objects. Uh, I've got a, uh, let me close that out, exit. Uh, so we'll look here, our first one, RWA0, uh, bit 0, and it's a toggle. And uh, this will enable it. And I went ahead and put a 16-bit uh, a, uh, um, decimal object here so you can see the BCD values that are applied over here. Uh, the same with status. Uh, word 1, bit 0. Word 1, bit 1. Uh, the enable off function. Uh, this allows the uh, these off times to be used to toggle the output bit back off after it's on or if it were on at power up it would toggle them off on those times if they were the next thing to come along and then of course we've got our start day which is uh, LWA3 and you can see we've got a uh, bit 0 through bit 6 and then uh, our start hour RWA 4 5 6 end day RWA 7 word 7 bit 0 word 7 bit 5 And then, of course, you've got the uh, end hour, minute, and 10 would be the second. And then, uh, of course, I also put a uh, navigation button on here to get to our macro scheduler uh, when we do that. So let's go ahead and run a simulation. So we'll set our time, uh, start hour 10, start minute 50, I better do 7. And 
and uh, start second can be zero. And uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and do our end time uh, and hour 10 and we'll do uh, the minute 58 second zero and turn it on now uh, you need to set all of the times uh, before you enable it if you change them on the fly uh, it will not happen until the very next cycle after that so just remember that it needs to be turned off uh, when you set the times now you can see our output bit came on And through the magic of video that minute went by and the output bit went off so uh, it's as simple as that let's move on over here on the uh, scheduler page I uh, just went ahead and copied and pasted and uh, modified the uh, other page and so we're going to go ahead and use some of these elements in the uh, in the macro that I've created and uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look at it there's a good bit going on in this macro for this current example as it is right now we've got our short objects we've got our we've got uh, start hour start minute stop hour uh, stop minute start a.m. Uh, which is the state of the a.m. and p.m. and uh, stop a.m. we're not using it in this example right here but uh, you're gonna see how uh, this could all be added into what we're doing so uh, right down here we're uh, getting the time um, we're actually starting at the uh, minute instead of the second uh, so we're starting at uh, 9018 so we're getting the uh, 24 hour time format basically down through there and then time six we're getting a 12 hour format hour from 9048 uh, well actually that's a.m. or p.m. 9048 and then 9049 is the 12 hour hour and that's a uh, read length of two we're also reading from our project the start hour set point the start minute set point the stop hour set point and the stop minute set point and we're also reading the uh, start day and start and stop day Here is uh, just some sets I was using when I originally tested it. I can get rid of that stuff. So down here we're doing a, uh, a for statement. Um, we're cycling through uh, this could be to six because right here we're only doing seven days so we're gonna go from zero to six and uh, that value will reside in I and so we're gonna cycle through each day of the week and we're going to compare I to the current day of the week and if uh, both of those are equal then we're going to compare our start time hour to the actual hour and the start set point minute to the actual minute. If uh, both of those are true then uh, we'll write a value of 1 into our output object and write that value to our output bit. And of course the uh, same as exact same operation is true for uh, 
for the uh, stop set point. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, run a quick simulation and uh, I'll demonstrate how this works. So uh, in this example we're not using any of this up here. Uh, just the start day. Today is Monday. It is 5 one in the afternoon and you can see we automatically turned on and uh, the end time we want to end at uh, 502 so there you saw it went back off uh, so that's uh, pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you guys an opportunity to see the code. Look it over in real, real time. I'll scroll down here nice and slow. Uh, this commented out. Let me get rid of that too. That's not necessary. This commented out stuff right here just shows the actual of your time array what each uh, data point within your array represents. And I'll scroll down here so you can see your statements. All right. Now, I'm not going to do a whole lot with this, but I'm just going to give you guys an idea or an example. So, um, up here, uh, you can see I've got this commented out, but you could always um, define these set points as an array, and then you can cycle that cycle through here uh, to the length of that array and extract that. Uh, that uh, data out of your array like this, you know, your, uh, it would look something like this on each one of your set points uh, or so. Then you could have uh, multiple set points on multiple days and uh, they would just cycle off and on like an alarm clock when, uh, when the time got to whatever the set point was it would it would set the value of the corresponding uh, uh, output to the to your output bit. So in other words, um, every time the time went by a start, it would tell it to start, and every time it went by a stop, it would tell it to stop. You could also import your year, month, and day data as here and add those into your statements and you could uh, even set your scheduler to start at a certain day of the year so or day of the week or day of the month your imagination's your limit uh, so down here I'll scroll down and show an example one way that code can be written to extract it from a uh, from an array. If you can uh, give you a sample, just look at this code here. And uh, actually, it's just that simple. Thanks for watching, and be sure to come back and see more of our instructional videos.